Everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello. Now, according to the Hollywood Reporter, it finally seems like a Last of Us TV show is in the works from HBO and Mr. Mr. Chernobyl. Hell yeah, it is, Mr. Chernobyl. Mr. Jonathan Chernobyl. His I forget real what his name. full name is. Craig Mazin, I Craig think Mazin. it's called. He's pretty amazing. He is, isn't he? Between me and you, so I think most people are just going to leap to who are they going to cast as Joel and Ellie, and we'll talk about that now. Also, I'm going to tease the What Culture Gaming podcast where we're going to do a full cast breakdown, including who's going to be David, who's going to be Bill, and everything in between. But for now, who's your Joel and Ellie going to be? Well, I, I have an Ellie, and I think it's the exact same Ellie that you want, and yes. a lot of people out there have been clamouring for, and it is, I've forgotten her name. Caitlin, it's Caitlin Diva. Caitlin Diva, yes, <laughs> I, I did get it right. I second guessed myself there. Yeah, Caitlin Diva, who you might have seen in Booksmart or the Netflix show Unbelievable. Well, see, I know Netflix? from Unbelievable the first time. I think it was on Netflix, yeah. Um, yeah. Unbelievable is a very, very grim, very dark show about um, a rape victim who's trying to get justice for the person that attacked her. Phenomenal show, I totally recommend it. She's the lead in that. Um, and so I think that... Um, and for me, I kind of went to her because it, I want, for Ellie, it's like I want someone who seems quite um, unassuming on the on the surface, seems quite sort of vulnerable, um, you know, surface level, but has that fire inside her and yeah. has that ability to sort of channel, you know, she needs to get things done eventually. You know, she needs to be the girl that can break your effing finger. And I love all that stuff. So, um, yeah, for me, uh, Caitlin Diva is half the character from Unbelievable and half who she is in Booksmart, where she becomes more confident and becomes yes. more more banter, you might say. I haven't seen Unbelievable, but I've seen her in um, Booksmart and mm. 12, uh, not 12 Years a Slave. She's in Short Term 12. Both have the same number of the title. That's why I got mixed <laughs> up. Uh, and she's great in Short Term 12. She has the same um, emotional vulnerability that I guess mm. she has from Unbelievable mm -hmm. as well. And she can just ha she has such a range. Like you said, she's got the uh, the banter, the the humour, the sort of like childish like jovialness, I guess. Yeah. As well as the ability to really dig deep and give a harrowing performance, which is exactly what you need from Ellie. Mm -hmm. And it also helps that she's kind of just the spit and dabs of Ellie in <laughs> The Last of Us One. She looks almost identical in a lot yeah. of ways. She, you mentioned this morning she has the same eyes and she it's, absolutely yeah. does. It's that sort of same sort of like sorrowful look. She has the ability to connote like general sort of... There's a thing that Troy Baker said. There's a great interview where he sits down with Ashley Johnson. Uh, it's on the PlayStation channel. It's from a few years ago uh, where they revisit what it was like filming The Last of Us and getting to meet each other for the, for the first time. And Troy Baker says when he first saw Ashley Johnson, um, and it's literally his words, he says that he uh, felt like he could protect her. And he said right. that um, he felt like she needed, uh, that she needed protecting. And she kind of... She's like, what do you mean? And he's just kind of like, well, I felt this sort of quality where I wanted to make sure you're okay. Yeah. And I think I have that with uh, Caitlin Deaver as well. She seems like someone who you just want to make sure is all right. Yeah. Like, all protected at all costs kind of thing. Yeah, I hope she's doing all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's just like, I think you need someone like that, that even from one look, it's you need someone that can replicate. If they replicate it in the show, the final shot from the game, um, which, you know, if that's if you're going to sell the end of that whole season on one facial expression, I think Diva could pull that off. She's the perfect choice. I think we, could, we can agree on that. But I hope so. say if, you know, Hollywood and HBO and Craig and Neil Druckmann don't agree with us, <laughs> who would you have as a backup? Oh, God. Um, I don't know, to be honest. I haven't really thought. Beyond her, I don't know who else I would have. I mean, a lot of people are just going, well, it could be Alan Page. Wait till. No, wait till no, 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 no. Not going to happen. I think you need someone who's maybe like more of a no-name. If it's not going to be someone who has established themselves as they can walk that line between vulnerability and fire, then I think you just need to cast someone completely new. Um, but I want to get onto something. We'll do, we should cast Joel. Okay. And I'm going to tell you my overall issue with this. Who's your backup for? I just, I'll have Thomas and Mackenzie. I just want to quickly okay. throw that out. Yeah. She's from, um, she was recently in Jojo Rabbit and she mm. has been in Leave No Trace. And she's honestly one of my favorite um, actors working today. I think mm. she is so great. I want to see her in everything. And I think she has very similar qualities to Ellie from the uh, source material. I don't think she quite looks identical, but I think that's fine as long yeah. as you can embody what Ellie means. I think she would be great for it. So she would definitely be my backup. But yes, Joel, <laughs> what do you think? My Joel, um, and I've thought this ever since I saw the movie, I think it came out in 2013, is uh, prisoners. Yeah. Uh, Hugh Jackman. Um, and you want you want prisoners level Hugh Jackman. The the what the scene in prisoners where he's um, berating the, the dude that he thinks has uh, has kidnapped his daughter, and he's just bashing the living hell out of this sink, and he's got a hammer and he's smashing the wall, and he's just like, "Tell me where she is," and he freaks out. Um, that is the the level of intensity that I want from Joel. I want that to be right under the surface at all times. Yeah. Um, and I think that obviously you've got the aesthetic side of it, where you know he pretty much looks like Joel in that movie too. Um, but yeah, it would be prisoners level. Uh, Hugh Jackman and, like I said, un un unbelievable slash book smart level Caitlin Diva. Well, I think that's pretty much when um, Logan came out. Everyone mm. kind of just said, well, this is a Last of Us movie that happens to be an X-Men movie it already. It literally borrows the same shot, the in, same looking in the yeah, car shot. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, he, 
I do think it would be great. But because we've already kind of had him in a story like that, I kind mm. of want someone new, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. why. Maybe he's almost too perfect for the role for me, <laughs> if that makes sense. I kind of don't want to see him because it's like, oh, obviously they're going to go for Hugh Jackman because look at him. He looks to spit and dabs. He I've does. used that twice now. I've never used that. I'm a big fan of spit and dabs. Um, I think what I remember, though, back when The Last of Us movie was in the works, because that yep. all fell through. I remember someone asked Neil Druckmann on Twitter, um, what's happening with this? And he just said it, it fell apart or whatever. Um, obviously, maybe those ideas have, have come across into the TV show. But back when that movie was announced, that was straight after the movie, uh, the game came out. Uh, Josh Brolin was sort of being like, like shared around a lot online. It's like, yeah. that guy could be Joel. I don't think so anymore. Interesting. But um, I don't know, he had like a certain stature to him that I just, I think over the years he's become more refined. He's not as like, he's not as aggressive. I think that his general mm. personality has become more lovable. He's done more comedies and stuff. And I don't see him as that... Then again, I'm saying that, but I mean, Hugh Jackman's a more rounded dude as well. Yeah, I mean, Hugh Jackman, like, he likes to make musicals, man. He likes to make, like, really lighthearted stuff, as well as know. the hor horrifying, you know, terrible Somehow Christmas. Somehow in my mind, there's a ferocity to Hugh Jackman that I've never right. seen Josh Brolin pull off. Ah, and, uh, and I don't know. Like I said, if you watch Prisoners, there's that bit where I just, you genuinely go, oh my God, that you're really putting your, yourself into that. So, yeah. See, Josh Brolin made it onto my shortlist, because okay. I, think, I think he might be a, a tad too old now mm. to play Joel from the first game, but mm -hmm. I do think he has that it's almost a subdued intensity you can yeah. tell it's there and it's just kind of waiting to come out and I feel like Joel would be the perfect conduit to have that because mm -hmm. in the in the in the game at least when he gets with Ellie mm -hmm. he's he's almost kind of you know suppressing the animalistic urges that his allowed him to survive for yeah. so long and he's trying to morph back into a father mm -hmm. and I think that Josh Brolin could do that really well <laughs> as well as true. you know bringing the intimidating stature and the fatherly authority to the role. Yeah, and you can you can kind of like drip feed that warmth back in again. And like yeah. that's the that's the thing is that you're spreading this over a whole season. So you need to you need to elongate all those character arcs. Although the size of the script for the original Last of Us and the amount of time it takes to complete it, I mean how long is that game? Like 15, 20 14, hours? 14 hours ish, I'd say, yeah. Uh, if you make a point 15. of exploring everywhere, there's all those optional dialogue sequences and things like that. So that and Neil Druckmann from the game is writing this too, so I assume that he knows how to sort of do that thing over time. Um, do you want to drop anyone else in as your Joel a backup? Well I've got two backups. Mm -hmm. We've got Jakey G, another Prisoners alum. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. I, I just assumed everyone knows who Jakey G I've is. I've never seen you put him down as Jakey G. I was like, who the hell is that? Well, I'm like, A like, YouTuber? Like spit and dabs. I've never really used that until <laughs> right now. And now I'm doubly committing to it. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal, I think. Oh, I can see him play anyone, man. Like, I think he has that intensity. He definitely has the intensity to him. He might be a, bit, a little bit young. Is I all can't I'm see say. Gyllenhaal as really? him. Really? I, I, you know, I think, I think it, for him, it's because like, when I was growing up, he was Donnie Darko. And then, yeah. you know, we've seen him in, like, well, even, like, again, if you want to say, prisoners like oh in Nightcrawler like he has that sadistic darker side to him but he's ultimately a friendly face I think oh I no? don't know I, don't, I disagree especially oh, I in stuff is. like Nightcrawler I think he's intensely that's the whole point weird. of that movie though no. Like he gets in everywhere, but he's actually like menacing and horrible. That's what I mean, that's what I mean. Like he gets in everywhere, but because mm. he's manipulative and bad and kind of it's true. creepy as all hell. Like no one <laughs> in that movie likes likes him. He no, no. just do it because he's good at his job, if mm. that makes sense. Mm. I do agree that he is kind of inherently charismatic. Though. Oh, I'll tell you what, we're doing this on the podcast, but he'd be a brilliant David. I think he'd be a really good... Uh, yes. If you got him down. <laughs> i put him down as David as well. A really good sort of like snaky, you don't really trust him, and like, yeah, realizing he's a cannibal later on would be brilliant. That's the thing. I don't want to like step on the toes of the pod too much, mm. but for David, you need someone who you kind of trust immediately yeah. and then realize, oh, he's a monster, but then they need to be able to do that monstrous side. Yes, yeah, so I've got Jakey G and Ben Foster, who doesn't really look Angel. like... Yes. Well, he's he's... Formerly, I don't know. That was, that was like ten years ago, man. <laughs> he's done a lot of good is he stuff. Still alive? He is. He's done really good stuff. He okay. was in Hella High Water, which is awesome. Keep going. Yeah. I think he could do it well. He doesn't look like Joel, <laughs> but I think he's a better Tommy. I think uh, he's bigger than Tommy. Yeah, I think for, Tommy needs to be like the um, the sort of potential of the the I don't know a, a version of Joel that you could see him becoming eventually. Yeah. The guy that has the has everything together. He's not freaking out. He has his morals in the right place and everything else. Uh, maybe we'll we'll do sort of wider castings like I said on the podcast. I want to talk about the general existence of this thing though. Yeah, we've got how much time left. But when I saw the announcement, I didn't go yay. I just went why. Well, Scott, right? I, I'm I'm thinking this right. Have you ever <laughs> gone yay to a video game adaptation ever? Because I remember. Um, the Witcher came out and you had the same response. I know, I did. I'm, not, I will, I'm not saying it's going to be good. No, but. no, but the, the thing is, because we don't need them. Like, yeah. it's if you've already got, it's like when the Metal Gear movie got announced, like years ago for the first time, Splinter Cell got announced as well. If, if, a, if a game was already cinematically focused and you've already got actors, you've filmed it, you've shot it, like, what, what, who, who's this for? Right, here's the thing. 
I am going to be a massive, massive hypocrite because every single time we do a video on video game adaptations, whether it's movie or TV mm. shows, I always say the exact same thing that you said, where it's if something's so cinematic and so perfectly done in the video game, mm -hmm. why would I want a lesser version of it? Yep. And yet the idea of a HBO Last of Us series with the creator of Chernobyl and Neil Druckmann on board, I, I will take a straight up adaptation. The amount of talent that is there, and if you get a really good cast, I just think I'm genuinely excited for this. And it's 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 not what I thought. I wanted. Mm. I didn't think I wanted a straight adaptation of the game. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd rather just do them, either see them, you know, play around in the universe or do something different. Mm -hmm. But with the amount of names attached, even only so far, I can't help but be excited. I hope because they've said it's based on the first game, which is assumedly a recreation of the first game story. I hope they don't do that. I hope they do something new, set it in between Last of Us One and Two. There's a whole bunch of years there, and um, that you could sort of do something more with those characters that wouldn't. I just I don't like the idea of them infringing on what Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson achieved and all those other actors as well. But just, they put their all into those characters, and yeah. I think that they've absolutely nailed them. And I think it's weird that their crowning achievement had now kind of has to be shared. And it's like, I, it's not taken away from them, but I, yeah. I just kind of go like, well, it was perfect. The Last of Us is perfect. It's true, but you know? it's, it's the same thing. I guess, oh, I don't know, man. Like, when it comes to adaptations of books and mm. stuff, the book might be perfect, and yet you can still do a spin on it. It's not a visual excited. medium, though. Like, there's still a slot to fill. For me, and this is more my personal thing, I genuinely think a, a well-done video game is the greatest medium on earth I just think it is so like I, ju I, I just don't see what you can do that hasn't already been done we're always going to be comparing the visuals to what went before we're always going to compare the plot beats it's not like something was missing that then you know the medium of TV can fill in and I'm still game for it I love Chernobyl and I love Last yeah. I love Neil Druckmann so much but I just can't I'm just not I'm just like okay uh, I'll, uh, my final thought is just that I don't see it as kind of like fixing or filling anything mm. in it's just something that exi ex exists separate mm. and can put their own spin on it kind of view certain things in a different way, mm. like using the storytelling devices that you find on telly, you won't have any gameplay, obviously. Yeah. And maybe you can make it a bit tight, and maybe you can do things a little bit differently and sort of play to the strengths of what's hopefully going to be a limited series, you know, yeah. a couple of episodes, hopefully around, I don't know, 10 or so. Was like like, five or something? Yeah, that five was really, six. really short. I was like, yeah, five, six. Yeah, I hope, I mean, like, like I said, we'll wrap this, but I like the idea of, I hope Neil Druckmann gets out there and just says, look, you know, we, we put this out, and ever since then, I've wanted to explore this with the characters, or I've been thinking about this, because, you know, the development time, I think it was about three years or whatever on that. Um, and obviously he would have had a whole bunch of thoughts. He wrote it alongside Bruce Straley, who's now left Naughty Dog, I think. Yeah, sure? uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, he's, yes. Not, he's not involved in this anyway. Um, and I hope that he sort of does something different. I just, I don't want scenes recreated. I don't want the same dialogue. I want him to do something different. There's so much there um, that you could do. And even when we saw, um, is it Sam, and uh, the, the two dudes that you come across? Henry and Sam. Henry and Sam. Um, when you come across them, it's like we, everyone's trying to survive and some people intersect. Yeah. And I think that that world is is right for that stuff. I'm just, I'm just kind of, I just don't know. I just don't know, Josh. And I think that's fair. You know, The Last of Us is so good. We didn't even realize we wanted The Last of Us 2 for a long time. Never mind a TV adaptation. Yeah. So it could go, I'm not going to lie, it could go terribly, terribly wrong. <laughs> but with the talent on board, I'm cautiously optimistic, but mm. I've been burnt before. We'll see. But let's know what you think down in the comments below. Who would you cast as Joel and Ellie? And what do you think about the idea of a TV show based? Based on The Last of Us overall. For now, though, I've been Scott from whatculture.com. I've been Josh from whatculture.com. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Jakey G, spitting dabs. <laughs> spitting dabs, miss. Mate. Mate. Mate, like.